No matter where you go, chances are someone somewhere has recorded you doing it. Whether you're out shopping with friends, driving cross country, or spending the day in town. And now, even walking outside in the country. So when considering this new technology, the important thing to think about is how will this change the way police operate in the UK? And more importantly, how will this impact our privacy? It's a sight familiar to many across the UK, a police helicopter flying overhead, providing aerial support for the police below. These titans of the sky are equipped with high quality cameras, a crew of three and the ability to fly at over 140 miles per hour. Now though there seems to be something a little smaller flying onto the scene. Thanks to a global pandemic and technological advancements, the police have now upped their drones to 300. The Met have also said that they own over 22, and as you can see, they're just behind me. Now, each police force has their own way of authorising how drones should be used and when they should be used. And this documentary has been given unprecedented access to those documents to see the decision-making process that warrants when a drone should be used. Now, Derbyshire Police have operated through an 84-page document. Now, this works alongside the Civil Aviation Authority's guidance, and that's what every drone owner in the UK has to use. Now, the primary function uh, outlined within the document for drone use is to provide support for officers dealing with ongoing incidents with the likes of road traffic collisions, aerial surveillance, along with searching for missing people. I think there is an inherent... Um culture of, of secrecy uh, within unfortunately within the police force but also within the military we've, we've discovered this a great deal within the military is that you know us as the public have no right to know what's going on and that that's nonsense of course um there, there are certain uh, rules and regulations which police have to uh, obey should be obeying uh, and this is all very worrying of course in in the context of the new policing bill that's going through which is uh, further limiting the rights of protest within this country. So I think there really needs to be a proper debate in this country about the limits on policing, the, the uh, relationship between the individual and the state. Um, we've always uh, greatly treasured our privacy and the fact that uh, we have certain civil liberties in the country and it, it can be eroded. And unfortunately, while people see that this technology has great benefits it also comes with you know huge problems in that it expands um, hugely expands the ability for the police and the and the state to su surveil the public now at the start of the pandemic the civil aviation authority who control the uk airspace allowed police to have more powers and abilities while using drones that included flying out of the line of sight so flying further than you can see and also flying for much longer periods too. Big data requires a big way of showing it. Here we have the overall numbers of drone use. Coming in big is Devon and Cornwall Police with 601 times used, distantly followed by Kent Police for 258. Now if we group all the figures and break them down into the months last year, this is what we get. In the middle of 2020, there's a definite rise. This starts to make sense if we factor in the pandemic too. March and April saw the first lockdown, and the biggest drone peak links with lockdowns starting to lift. This final graph considers the reasons for the drone use. Now each force categorises slightly differently, but these have been the main categories in common. Two of the main areas of interest are used for missing persons and for photo and video gathering. Now these categorise everything from road traffic collision videos to crime scene recording, as well as critically intelligence gathering. 
The key to this, though, is how does this impact people's privacy? When we're talking about the air navigation order, the general rule is not to fly within 150 metres of built-up areas. But there are exceptions to that. And with additional training, then that exception, that, that, that um, requirement disappears. Um, and with additional permission from the CAA, you might be able to fly near them as well. So, yes, um, from uh, in a properly established um, drone system for the emergency services, they won't have to ensure that they, they, they fly, don't fly, out of build up, fly, fly away from built up areas. Of course, that wouldn't make a great deal of sense for them. OK, so here's your burning building. If you could just go 150 metres away, we can get the close up. Not going to work. So there's that angle. But also, if we're talking emergency services, um, they're going to be covered by GDPR. They're going to have their data protection mechanisms in place. They should be going through the impact assessment, making sure that they, for instance, keep the data secure, might need to disclose it in due course. but where not not redistributing it, um, where you don't have that lawful base. So that there's certainly a distinction there. We reached out to the Home Office and police across the UK for comment or an interview. However, they refused to take part in the documentary. Looking to the future, though, it seems that drones are here to stay. <laughs>